Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Turkey season is at an end here and it's time to clean up our dirty hunting black powder muzzleloading shotgun here. I'm going to go over a quick rundown of some of the materials and the things that I use and how I go about cleaning a piece like this after it's been in the field for a couple weeks. First up, if you're like me and you didn't have the opportunity to discharge your muzzleloading shotgun on a real turkey this year, before you get to cleaning, you want to make sure that you discharge it and that your bores are clear. So we're going to take a couple shots here at the only turkey we're going to shoot this year. Interesting there, much like uh, the first uh, time we had a chance to shoot a couple turkeys there this year. We had a, a cap snap on our one barrel. I flicked off a fleck of some kind of debris there off the nipple. That's similar to what I found um, on the nipple when I was, after I was hunting and we snapped a cap on some toms. So if you haven't caught the actual hunting video, check it out. It's a little embarrassing, but. Okay. So that left barrel took a couple caps for us to get it to go off. I think that's probably a test for another day. As always, this is just one way to clean your muzzleloader. If you ask 10 different muzzleloading enthusiasts how they clean their muzzleloaders, you're going to get 12 different answers. Uh, so this is by no means the only way or the right way to do this. But here I have a five gallon bucket about half full of soapy water. It's warm water. Um, just out of the tap. I'm not boiling water to get anything hot. I have some pre-made moose milk here. This is from Flintlocks LLC. There are tons of recipes out there online though to make it yourself. Um, I also have some ballastol here for kind of the nooks and crannies because it's in an aerosol or spray can here. And then I have cleanse oil, which is my preferred finishing oil or, or cleaning oil when it comes to muzzleloading arms. These three items are going to work on removing black powder, rust, and corrosion from being in the field. And then the cleanse oil is going to go on top to kind of seal up the pores, at least to my understanding, of the barrel, of the metal, the wood, and everything. And, um, and that's kind of the combination that you go for. Extra stuff with that, I have a bundle of cleaning patches here. I have a small flathead screwdriver because they can be handy for getting into nooks and crannies. I have a nipple wrench and then I have a ramrod or a wiping stick that um, has a jag that's just a little too small for these bores um, at 14 gauge. But if I double up the patches, it works well. So that's how and why I use that stuff. The shotgun we're cleaning today is a Scott & Sons or WC Scott um, black powder side by side shotgun from the mid 19th century. Um, because it's English made and from the mid 19th century, uh, we have some features that we don't see in earlier styles of muzzleloaders that make this really easy to take it down and clean it. So to start, just like you would on any percussion arm, we can set our hammers to half cock here. And we have a barrel key here at the front of our forestock. With that, we can push that forward. And I just use my thumbnail. Um, if you don't have fingernails, you can use the screwdriver like I'd mentioned or something softer if you don't want to ding anything. So that barrel key slides open just like that. And something that's neat about this that you see in many other English arms from the period is that this key is actually locked into the stock. It has a slot in here that is captured. So this key is captured. It can't be lost. It makes it really easy to take down this shotgun and clean it. Now, just like many other hook breech arms, our barrels come out and we have our barrel assembly and our stock assembly here separate from each other for easy cleaning. From there, I'm using my nipple wrench here to loosen up each of our nipples. I've pre-loosened them because they were a little tight. And I wanna set these right here in front of me. Now, this is a trick I learned from my grandfather bench shooting. Your ballastol cap has a little, an interior circle in there. I just spray some ballastol in there and then I'll drop some moose milk in on top enough to fully submerge those nipples so they can just sit in there and soak while we're working on the barrel. And then with our barrel assembly and our warm soapy water, we're just gonna stick our barrel breech end into the hot soapy water so that water can get up into that breech through those nipple threads and everything and start working on kind of where that powder has been sitting for the past few days. Now, I'm not certain if this one is like this, but on some of these English shotguns, your breech end is actually gonna have a pocket in there that keeps everything separate, but will have a, a hole for your powder to get right into your flash channel. 
Um, I've done just a little bit of research on this, but from what I can tell, this is an appropriate way to clean these because that water will get all the way through those nooks and crannies where a ramrod or wiping stick with a cleaning jag isn't going to be able to get into that rear fire chamber, as I'm calling it. And then with our cleaning patches and our wiping stick, we're going to create some suction into these barrels and pull water through the breech up through the barrel and really through the entire barrel as far as we can go. So I'm taking my doubled up patch because that's how I have to do this for this muzzleloader and I'm just running it down to the breech. And then as I pull back up, we will draw suction, pulling some water up. And then to demonstrate that water pressure there, you can see as I push it back down, we get some water pouring out. And I'm surprised really that this isn't dirtier. But you can see the color of that water changing already as it comes out. And it would help if you had multiple buckets of water here to keep exchanging clean water. But to my understanding, part of the advantage is having so much water the amount of corrosion or nasty stuff that can get back into the barrel um, is pretty minimal. And then you're gonna clean it afterwards anyway. So it's not a major concern. So I'm gonna pull out and switch over to the other barrel. And you can see there, there's my cleaning patch. So we have some of that black powder soot on there. This water really starts to eat away at it pretty quick, which is handy. I'm just turning that patch over and we're just gonna run down well, we're just gonna get a new patch. And I'm running the same process. So I'm pulling water up, forcing water out. And I noticed that as I'm pushing the water out, it gets darker towards the end. So I think I'm pulling the soot from the breech up and it gets pushed out last. And then just to do this, quickly and efficiently, you just leave the breech end. Got some there below my, or above my stick. You can see how nasty that water is coming up from the top. That's why you don't want to do this inside. You don't want to do it maybe even in the garage, depending on how sensitive your uh, household compatriots are to smells. I've heard many a tale of people getting banished uh, to cleaning their muzzleloaders outside. So just looking at the breech end here, you can see we have just some spotty rust in those threads. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that we oil those up um, on those nipples before we put them back in. And under, on the underneath side here, you can see we have just a little bit of discoloration, uh, but we're gonna go through and, and really scrub this down before we put it back together and make sure that it's nice and oiled. Back at the bench now, I can kind of switch over, uh, let this sit for just a minute. The stir up my nipples in the ballastol lid there. And I'll just take the spray ballastol and just kind of hit everything. These locks, the trigger and everything. I mean, there's a lot of hardware on here that can begin to rust. And although this isn't, you know, an antique original, we don't want, you know, excessive rust on it. We want to take good care of it. So I just like to spray that, let that ballastol kind of work in. I noticed as I was carrying this that even though it wasn't from shooting, uh, we still had some, some buildup here uh, on the back end or the front end really of our breech here um, in the front end of the stock here on the tang. Uh, so I wanna make sure that we get that sprayed and we're gonna make sure we wipe that down very well. Um, you can just take a cleaning patch then and just kind of rub that ballastol in I like it as a cleaner. I like that it's in that aerosol can because I just know that it's getting everywhere. Um, and I'm, you know, I do my best to scrub where I can, but I feel like that spray gets into those nooks and crannies. Now here's where our screwdriver can come in handy. Back here in our tang where a hook breech hooks in, I just use that screwdriver to make sure we get into those corners of that square block so we don't have any moisture saving itself in there.
make sure we scrub our front tang face here. And you can do this with whatever solvent or cleaner you're looking for and, and you like to use. Moose milk will do, in my experience, a very similar, um, similar job as something like Ballastol. I want to get into the interiors of our hammers here. This is another space where that little screwdriver comes in handy. And we can force that patch down into those crevices. And I'll just kind of twist it in there. We get it all the way around. And when cleaning muzzle loaders like this, it's not abnormal in my experience to see some surface rust after a few days and you've let things sit. I finished hunting this morning. Um, so this is a relatively quick cleanup job for this piece, but I will check on it every day, uh, really for about a week. And uh, depending on the weather conditions where I'm at, how dry the house is, I will come back through and make sure I apply more oil as needed um, and make sure that we prevent any rust from happening. As with any muzzleloader though, I'm not super concerned about surface rust because it can wipe away so easily. It's when you leave something uh, rusty and corroding actively for months and months or years and years that you really start to see issues. So I'm gonna pull the hammers back to full cock here. I like to get behind the hammers where they intersect with the stock with that patch. I find that that's a place where um, they can rust easily. So I like to just get in there. I'm gonna bring the hammers down just so they don't come down accidentally just shaking my nipples again in that ballastol lid when it comes to our barrel now we've ran water through it and i know that there are people that say um, to let it sit in the sun to make sure that everything is dried before you go and do much more with it um, you can turn it upside down like this and see i've got just a couple drops of water there um, you can create kind of a suction around the breech end here and blow <sighs> and force a little water out. You can use an air compressor, you can use a heat gun. What you wanna do is get that moisture out of there um, and make sure you don't have water sitting in there because that can also cause that pinning and that rusting. Um, what I typically do next here, it's a little more difficult because we're out of the four stock, but just like my other muzzle loaders, I like to spray some bowel stall in the bores and for this phase, I just really focus on the interior of the bore, and then I'll focus on the exterior. We'll put it back together and then focus on the piece as a whole. So this becomes a little more difficult to hold just because it's so short, but you can kind of grab it between your knees and keep it up against your bench here. And I'll get a stack of patches like this, and I'll open up my moose milk, and I'm just gonna soak these patches through. And this is just going to be, usually I don't make as much of a mess, but these are just going to be my wet cleaning patches for this. So I'm grabbing two, again, just because my jag is just a hair small for these bores. And you can see there, we still have some of that black powder discoloration on those, but it's not um, terrible, grimy, nasty. Um, it means that we're making progress, which is good. So we have kind of a green hue I'm gonna flip these over so that our interior side is now on the exterior and we're just gonna run down the other barrel. And I'll come in with two dry patches. So we have just still some discoloration there, but we're gonna go through run some more patches through it. And if we need to, we can jump back into the water, but I don't know that we're gonna need to. Um, and we're just gonna keep going with this until we get an acceptable patch out, just like we would with any muzzleloader. And acceptable is really up to you as, the, as, your, 
the enthusiast, you know, what you're looking for is what you need to get. And you'll notice there, sometimes when I get down to the bottom, I'll just twist that. That's an old habit. I don't know how important or how detrimental possibly it could be. That's just something that I do. And then we're getting some of that fluid coming out. So I just kind of twist up a tail or a corner of that patch, stick it in there and make sure we get that nice and cleaned up. We could even spray some ballastol in there. Let it bubble and fizz and get down in there. And that right there is the kind of patch that I'm looking for out of the bore of my muzzleloader. Uh, there's just some faint discoloration there. We can flip these over or go through and get some new cleaning patches here, some fresh ones. These are dry. I'm wanting to make sure I get everything out of there that I can and I really can just kind of scrub as much as I can in there. So I'm down at the bottom, pulling that up. That's the color I'm getting on that one. Flip it over, run down the other bore, twist it around. And there's the patch out of the other barrel. So this is what I've got at this point for this piece. You can see here on the table, and I'll show you a bit of a close up, the kind of timeline. <laughs> of that for these patches here. We went from soaking it to then running it through uh, with our cleaning solution here. And it takes a while from patches like four to eight. Uh, it really feels like you're not making any progress, but you are. And I think that's the important thing to remember when you're cleaning with a muzzleloader is that you get to a point where it feels like it's not gonna get clean, but it is, you just have to go a couple more patches and you're gonna be good to go. From here now, I'm just going to coat, and I mean coat, two of my cleaning patches with cleanse oil here, soaking them to their solid green. And I'm gonna run it down each bore. This is just a quick down and up to saturate these bores with that cleanse oil. And I'm even going to refill the patch going down here. We'll soak those again. And we're gonna scrub the exterior here of our barrel with those oily patches. And this is going to stop, should stop, it should aid in stopping any surface rust that could be lurking on this barrel and on this hardware from being out in the woods. I'm gonna make sure we get down into those proof marks and down here through our barrel key. And I'm making sure to get oil here in the creases of that rib. You can't over oil it is how I look at it, at least on the exterior here. And then back here at the working end, the breech area here. I'm careful to scrub and apply as much oil as I can. Letting some of that oil drip down and get into those fire channels, those fire cavities, however you want to look at it. In there, so just we have some, we have some oil sitting and hanging out in there. I'm not worried about that ruining um, a charge or anything because we're gonna, next time we take this out, snap a couple caps, that's gonna force anything that's in there out or cook it right off, I think. Um, that's my opinion on it. I'm not a scientist. So here I've dumped our nipples out. I wanna be careful not to lose these in this grass. And I'm just gonna dry them off. And I'm just drying them off with a cleaning patch. And again, if you wanted to make sure that everything was super dry, you could take a heat gun to all of this very easily and cook off that water pretty quickly. I'm planning on having this out more this spring and summer, so it's the kind of thing that I'm not super fixated on. Uh, this is gonna get cleaned a few more times this year. So from here, I take each nipple, I'm just gonna put a dab of oil on the threads, rotate it around so that oil gets all the way around. And then I'm gonna loosely screw that in. And I'm just gonna take it to a finger tight level here. 
because we're going to be checking this for rust over the next few days, I don't need to tighten these down as if I'm going to go shooting hard with it. And keeping it loose makes it easier for me to check back in and check on those threads. I'm noticing some browning and some discoloration here along this rib in front of our nipples. So I'm just making sure to scrub that well with our oil. If I see something happening and I see some surface rust, what I'll do is just take a really fine scotch bright, put some oil on it, and just scrub. And in my experience, that does a good job of removing any of those rusty spots. I use a lot of this cleanse oil. Um, I'm not trying to be wasteful, but I do find that it works really well. So I'm gonna set that to the side now. We're gonna take our same oily patches here. We're gonna get them nice and soaked again. I mean, I want these saturated. I want it coming off on my hands here because then I know that I'm getting as much oil into what I'm working on as I can. And I'm just hitting inside our forestock there. And then I'm coming around to the outside like we did with that ballast stall. And I'm coming around and just giving it a gentle scrub. Now, you could argue that I don't need to do the ballast stall. But again, I like the ballast stall because it's in that aerosol can. And I know it's getting in places that I can't with my fingers. So I get it into the tang there. And then I come down the wood with that same oily patch just to protect that wood a little bit. Fill it in so it doesn't get too dried out over time. And this comes down to your personal taste. There are a couple spots on that trigger guard we will hit in time. But for right now, I think that's doing okay for us. At this point now, I'm just gonna push our barrel key or pull our barrel key out. Fix our barrels to our stock again. And then something that I've always done, you don't have to do this, but I'll bring those hammers down on that oily patch there just so that is capped and any extra oil is, is getting in there, theoretically, I think. And this helps keep things a little loose. Then I can take two more oily patches here, get them nice and sopping. I mean, this thing's kind of sticky right now, but I find that that's okay especially about being out after being out in the woods like this has been. So now each of these oily patches, I just kind of bunch up like a crab rangoon and I just stick in that muzzle. And if I want to then, just spray some more into that patch. This is not an ad for cleanse oil. But this works for me. This is really just what I do when I'm done shooting and I'm done shooting for a video. This is the kind of cleaning process I go through. Um, that's just how I do it. None of these companies talk to me. <laughs> that's okay. It's how I want it. But this is just how I'm doing it. Um, you know, you can get cheaper materials and, and make your own moose milk and things. Um, just with a young family, I find it's easier at times just to buy some of this stuff. Um, and then go play with the kids. A kid right now, but we'll see. And then not that it's going to corrode, but I'll just wipe down our ramrod here before setting it back into the thimbles. And that's it. That's how I clean up my muzzle-loading black powder shotgun after turkey season. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye on this for a few days. Like I said, I'm gonna check on it daily for about a week and keep an eye out for any surface rust, just because we were out on a couple really damp, rainy days with this. Um, 
I didn't notice anything drastic after those rainy days. I wiped it down, um, but really everything seemed to be up to snuff. So I'll check on this, like I said, for a week and then probably a couple times a week after that, just to make sure because this is a special piece to us here. Um, but really after that, it's just gonna hang out until we get it out the next time for the range. And by that time, it's not gonna be oily really to the touch. Uh, I'm not sure the science behind that, but that's just my experience with it. Um, when we bring it out next time, we'll run a dry patch down each bore and it will snap a couple caps and we'll be good to go. That oil's not gonna gum us up any in my experience, so. Oh, I wanted to say too, um, when it comes to cleaning patches, it can feel like you're just throwing away money buying cleaning patches. Uh, and I understand because I've been there where um, even buying cleaning patches and just throwing them away kind of stinks. Um, you can clean these. I don't recommend trying to clean your first couple, but these down here, the rest of these, I find if I throw them in a can, like this ratty old paint can here, with warm water and Dawn dish soap, I'm sure other brands work well, uh, and I let them soak and I wring them out and kind of jostle them around with my hands like I agitate, I think that's the word, um, and then let them out to dry in the sun. And I can keep using these and I don't see any effect on the muzzle that I'm cleaning if I'm using used cleaning patches. Now, I understand, you know, I just said I'm not uh, making all of my cleaning solutions, but I just present that to you as a possibility if that's the kind of thing that you're concerned about going through all these cleaning patches. You can clean and reuse these. And uh, even if you're concerned about residue traveling from one patch to another muzzleloader, just use that used patch for the first couple that you run down a bore where it's gonna be its dirtiest. And then use the clean patches, the new patches, for the rest as you're trying to get clean because those first few patches, they're just gonna get ate up anyway. Um, and using a, a dirty patch, a cleaned dirty patch, isn't gonna affect things too much. So that's a little frugal tip for you in case you hadn't considered it. That's all I have for you today. I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.